Hi, everyone. Thanks to, thank you for coming. And first of all, I'd like to thank Irina for, for having me this evening. And of course, thank you one more time for trusting me, because actually, as you can read here, you shouldn't. You shouldn't, because <laughs> SEOs lie. And this is um, a habit we have, all SEOs have, even if we do not admit it. But let's see. In the end, we will see that this is not going to be a problem. And probably, yes, I will probably lie at some point as well. But anyway, so let's start. So why do SEOs have to lie or they're forced to? Well, it depends. <laughs> it depends. This is the typical answer we give to any, any questions usually. But um, let's see. The first one, the first reason is that SEO is not a science. Yes, I know that um, some people associate SEO with uh, reverse engineering. This is true, but only partly true, I would say, because we, I think no one in this room has ever accessed the, the algorithm of a search engine. And if you do come and say hi later on after this speak, because I may have a couple of questions for you. Um, then the second reason, uh, bosses and clients tend to ask uh, yes or no questions. So mm, for maybe at first people accept an answer like, yes, will this work? Will this not work? Yes, well, you know, it depends. But after a while, they need to, to, get, to have an answer, which is yes or no. We cannot know this, because since SEO is not a science, uh, SEO people cannot give a yes or no answer. And so we tend to force it and we say, yes, this will work. No, this will never work. But this is simply not true. And then SEOs, well, like most people, seldom share their, their secrets. You know, imagine you, you come across a, a gold mine by chance and you will probably the last thing you would like to do is share it with the rest of the world. Um, so you probably when you see some secret technique, some secret tool or special plugin for your CMS, well, probably I'm not saying that this is they are all scams or they do not work. But the most important thing is that this uh, probably uh, with the image of the gold mine, uh, probably uh, these people have reached best case scenario, uh, a stage in which selling the map of a gold mine is more profitable than the gold mine itself. So let's recap the situation a bit. So SEOs don't know the truth because they can't know the truth. And SEO keeps changing because we have to adapt. As I always say, uh, and you know, my team members know that, I mean, SEO um, reacts to what the search engine does and the search engine is not um, something we can analyze in a scientific way it is something that is changed by usually a private company let's think of google which is which keeps changing because they want to so this is the reason why no one really knows what is going to change how how much when so this is the situation so if this is the situation we of course, we can have some questions, naturally. So how can we hire the right SEO specialist? Some of us are, uh, work in the performance marketing, some are start -uppers. So how do we hire the, these people, which is the most important skill they need to have? And also, if we want to do SEO ourselves, uh, which are the right skills we need to develop, how do we know what is going to work and what is not going to work? And several other questions, like how long will it take if I do this? How long will it take for, for example, Google to react in a positive way? Uh, how long will it take to rank on top of Google? We can have several, several questions. And the answer is one only, test. We need to test. Or if we hire someone, we should prefer someone who has experience in testing, but um, in testing in the right niche. Because in the right version of the search engine, in we want 
to rank. This is extremely important. Uh, um, at some point, there will be one search engine customized on each one of us. Google is very close, for example, to, to these type of things. So the search result of each one of us will be different. Probably we will never reach this level of um, customization, but we uh, can definitely, and we have now, to think of the SERPs, so the search engine result pages, as micro worlds. Because every SERP, every search engine result page, is a micro world, and each page uh, competes with the others in the same uh, location, language, and market niche. Uh, so every SERP is, as I said, a micro world, and this changes a lot the way we have to do SEO. You know, there is a, a funny story. I'm not good at telling jokes, but I will tell it anyway. Uh, we are in the jungle. There are two explorers, and one of them sees a lion approaching. So he tells the other, hey man, we're in trouble because the lion is approaching. And the other guy goes to the, into the tent and puts on the sport shoes. So his friend says, hey, do you really think you can run faster than the lion with those shoes? And he answers, I don't have to run faster than the lion. I have to run faster than you. So you, so you need to, you don't need to compete with all the 100 and 30 trillion pages that Google has in its index, uh, probably more than that. You only need to compete uh, with your real SERP competitors, which are only a tiny fraction of them, and you need to know what is working in, 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 that, in, this, in your niche. So this is extremely important. This is an important principle. We have basic principles, which are absolute, but then what it's going to make the difference is extremely relative. It's extremely relative. And it's d d determined by this combination of location, market niche, and language. So, how can we test in a proper way if we want to know what, uh, what will work and what will not in our market niche, in our SERP? So, first of all, I have tried to simplify a lot, of course, and apply some features of the scientific testing to SEO, provided that, one more time, SEO is not a science. We need to have unique and clear metrics. This is quite straightforward, because clearly uh, we need to understand and measure something. If you can't measure, it has never happened. Uh, and, of course, you need to understand uh, how much time you want to dedicate to testing. You can't run a test forever, but you can't run a test for, such, for a too short time frame, because otherwise it, you will never see any, any results. Uh, typically, the, the KPI we use for SEO testing is ranking, ranking in the key locations, because more and more um, searches are localized. Uh, but you can also test other metrics, for example, the click-through rate. Uh, the second and very important principle is the control group. Here the keyword is uh, representativeness. So we need to identify some uh, pages, for example, that are very similar to the ones that we are testing on and see what, what, what's, what's happening on them and use them as a control group. Uh, it's extremely difficult and not fully scientific because in SEO, we cannot have the same page twice on a, pay, on, on, on a website. This would be duplicate content. Probably someone is familiar with, with this issue. So it's duplicate content, so it will never work for, for in, for, from an SEO point of view. So we need to find pages that are similar enough to, uh, to be used as control group. And then there is the third element, the replicability, which uh, well, I can tell you that most people will not reach this, this stage. Uh, basically, if we find that something has an effect on our ranking, on our website, uh, we should be able to, uh, for example, to remove that, that thing, deactivate the test on a page, and activate the same test on another page. 
and see if the result is the same, is some sort of confirmation of further verification of what we may have found. Uh, most people are happy when they see some movements, when they see that the ranking goes, goes up, then they say, okay, cool, I found something, let's, let's go crazy on it. Uh, this is actually very, very important because the, we will see this in a minute. Uh, these are the, the features, but when we want to perform a good SEO test, we need to follow, <laughs> of course, this is the typical answer, it depends, but we need to follow two important principles, isolation and going to extremes. So we need, uh, so we know the features, we know they are typical, but again, if we are testing something in a scientific way, for example, in a lab, well, we can have a fully isolated environment. This is impossible in, in SEO. But as Google says, uh, they take into account 200 factors for each page when it comes to evaluate the SEO value of a, of a page. So ideally, and only theoretically, unfortunately, uh, we should isolate all the 199 that we are not interested in and go to extremes, so highlighting as much as possible the factor we want to test. Uh, so how can we test? Uh, we can test in several ways. Uh, it, it depends, sorry again, uh, on how much time we have, how much money we can invest and also how, uh, how comfortable we feel with uh, doing this on our website or creating a test website and test on it or create more than one website just for testing. Uh, let's take a look at these three options. We have, of course, if we test on our website, the effort is minimum. In the end, we don't have to know anything. We don't have to learn any, any, any new uh, feature. It's everything is already there. Mm, the costs are reduced to a minimum because we do not have to invest in anything and we can have faster benefits in case we are lucky enough to test something which is all working and it is giving us, for example, if we test something which is aimed at improving the ranking, if we go up in ranking, well, probably it's our website already going up. So we have faster benefits, but the cons are that clearly we have higher risks. If we test something which is not good, and if we are testing we don't know, uh, we can have, of course, uh, we, can, uh, we will risk to have, for example, in worst case scenario, uh, a penalty from, from the search engine, uh, which means that the isolation, the possibility to isolate is limited because uh, on our website, if we have a website which is live, it's there for a reason. Probably it represents our, our business. Uh, we sell our products, so we cannot really isolate all the, uh, all the factors that we don't want to test. And for the same reason, we cannot go to extremes for the, the factor that we want to test. Mm. For example, uh, going to extremes, an example could be if we want to test link building, so creation of backlinks, for example, my favorite type of testing. Uh, well, we don't have to use just one link or two, but 20, 50, 100. So you need to go to extremes. This is, as some of you see that they, are, they say they probably have tested something. So uh, this is extremely risky. We can have a great benefit if we are lucky, but if we are not lucky, we can have our website penalized. So creating a test website and just for testing, well, this is a possible option. The pros are that the risks are minimized. Basically, we do not risk anything. Whatever happens to a website that we have created just for testing is a learning. We do not risk anything. We can only learn something. So we can have a good isolation because the website is, of course, should not be related or linked in any way to our main website. And we have a high flexibility because we can build the website the way we want. So we can also test features 
that we don't have on our website, then we may, for example, uh, implement at a later stage only if they prove to be successful. The cons are the additional efforts and costs. Because, for example, uh, if we want to create a test website, it has to be believable. You know, Google is, I would say, unfortunately, smarter than I would like it to be, to be honest. So if we create a website which is made with um, copied content or with random texts or using a very poor setup, they will never index it. So Google will never believe that such a website is existing so, or it's a real one. So we need to invest money and time to make it believable. And for example, we also need to make it believable in, um, in the community of the, of the internet. So for example, uh, our website, which is a real one, has uh, probably a Facebook page link into it, or some, someone tweeting, uh, tweeting it, or uh, oh. you know, in, in, the, uh, in, in Instagram you can have a link or whatever. So, you need also some backlink, at least. So you need to make it believable, and it takes time and money. Uh, I'm not considering here all the costs of buying a domain. You can also find a free domain if you want, or hosting services. But this can, of course, represent an additional source of cost. And, and uh, if we find something, the benefits are slower, because once we find that something is effective, then we have to apply it to our website. Then the third option is testing on a network of test sites. Uh, this is probably the best one when it comes to isolation and comparing all the factors. Uh, a popular technique that some of you can be familiar already with is um, to uh, come up with a keyword that doesn't mean anything or doesn't exist. And for example, we have five websites and we optimize all these websites for this keyword that we have made up. And then all these websites have to be believable, again. And then we see what happens when we apply on each of these websites, optimized for the same keyword, a different SEO technique on it. So basically this way, we are creating our own micro world and we see both a website and its competition uh, also behind the scenes. Uh, this is uh, something that we cannot replicate in, in, in any other situation. For example, uh, we can also go the extra mile with this technique. And for example, we can uh, uh, associate these made up keywords with our marketing market niche. For example, if we deal with marketing, we can come up with the name of a technique that doesn't exist, so we're not going to interfere with any other SERP. And then we apply this technique and we see what happens. We will see that, um, that if we have chosen the right combination, again, language, market niche, of course, in this case, marketing, uh, and location, if it is relevant, in chances are good that it is relevant, uh, we will see what happens. We can isolate everything because we have created an isolated SERP and we can compare things because we can apply a technique to the website A and then deactivate that technique and apply it to website B and see what happens just to prove. So we also have the best control group and the, the highest, the best level of replicability. The cons, I mean, it, so far it looks marvelous. Actually, it's not. It can be a nightmare. Running a, a, a network of websites, it's extremely time consuming. It takes time, money, and also it, it can get very hard to manage. There are uh, tools that can help you with that. But uh, needless to say, this technique that I've said may be uh, not particularly appreciated by the main search engines. So, when you, but of course, we are testing. But again, we need to make our network believable. So the cons are high efforts and cost, hard to manage, and of course, it takes 
longer because it can be fun, but it can be also a nightmare. So we know how we can test all the techniques. So I want to leave you this evening with some ideas of what we can test. They are uh, random ideas, I would say. You can find tons of ideas that you can apply to your market niche, to your website, or to your test websites. So let's see them a bit. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think they are the best ones. They are doable. Let's go through them quickly. So uh, content freshness. Uh, some people say that um, if we update some, some page that has already, that used to rank well, but now is not ranking so well because some competitor is ranking higher than us. If we update it uh, with fresh content, and fresh has to be, means in this case, uh, um, for example, there are, if we mention recent things, for example, norms, or if we talk about technology, the latest updates of the technology, we should bump up and go back to the previous ranking. Or maybe it's just a waste of time. So this, this has to be tested. Citations and no link mentions. Uh, this is pretty controversial. Some people say that if your brand, especially in a local SEO, if your brand name is mentioned on several pages, especially if they are mentioned in, uh, in, in, in local pages without any link, and especially if they are mentioned together with your address and phone number, they have used the acronym NAP, name, address, and phone number. Uh, this will give, especially in the local SERPs, a boost. Some others say this is a complete waste of time. Then content consolidation and granularity are connected together. Uh, in some cases, we find uh, pages that um, cover on each page different aspects of the same topic. Uh, for example, we, if we have a booking website where we can uh, book a hotel in Berlin, uh, we find uh, hotels in Charlottenburg, hotels in Mitte, hotels in uh, Friedrichshain and so on. So each, each district has a dedicated page. If we consolidate this information and we make one big page with more authority, we may have, we may rank for the, the keywords we used to rank before, plus some more generic keywords. For example, hotels in Berlin, uh, which we cannot target with too granular uh, or too specific pages, or the other way around. You will find examples, if you Google a bit on this, you will find examples of both approaches. Then, uh, no follow backlinks. Um, um, backlinks are still the most, one of the most important uh, ranking factors that the main search engines take into account when it comes to evaluate and assess the value of, of a website. But, uh, as some of you may know, uh, you can, uh, webmasters can put an, an attribute, uh, no follow, uh, which basically um, doesn't prevent the link from working, but it tells the search engine not to take that link into account when it comes to uh, evaluating uh, the, uh, the linked website. So we are basically, with that attribute, uh, webmasters neutralize the SEO value of a link. Is this true? Hmm. Well, some people say yes, no follow back links are completely useless. They only use them because they can mix up a bit and we, so their link profile is more believable. That's the only use of it. Some others say and remark that search engines, especially Google, do whatever they want. So the, the no follow is not a comment, it's an indication, it's a suggestion. So in the end, if you don't do any, uh, if, if you discard or you skip all the no-follow links, probably you are missing some important uh, source of link juice, as, as we say. Um, then visual contents, uh, we are in, I mean, 
in a more and more visual uh, internet. Let's think of Instagram. Uh, so we know that the user experience is a ranking factor. And so it, at the same time, the page loading speed is another ranking factor. So if we put high quality pictures and videos and whatever on our website, will our audience be engaged? So will we have user experience signals, uh, positive UX uh, signals, or we are, are we going to slow down the loading speed of our website? Let's test. And then low value content removal. Uh, this is pretty controversial actually, because some people say that if you have especially big websites, if you have uh, a lot of pages, some of them may receive a very, very little traffic. This means they are either not very interesting for the audience or uh, not very well optimized. Um, this may dilute and push down the average value, the average quality score of the website. Um, there is no such a thing in SEO uh, like quality score, which is mainly an SEM principle. But some people say that if, they, if we remove the pages receiving very, very little traffic, we may have an improvement of all the rest of the website in terms of performances. Or simply, we are removing pages that at least bring a little bit of traffic. Again, we can test this. And then the very last one, um, I have put AMP and PWA. Um, accelerated mobile pages and progressive web apps. Uh, I could list here several other technologies that uh, the main search engines, in this case Google, is endorsing. He's been endorsing for a while. And they always say mm, that they do not bring any direct SEO advantage. Well, if you check online, you will find people who love this technology, especially AMP, because they have improved their ranking, especially on mobile devices, and as well as people who hate these, these technologies because they haven't seen any advantage, but it took a lot of time to implement them properly and fix all the errors and fix all the layout things. So again, test it. So this is it. Thank you, and now we'll go forth and test. Thank you so much for the wonderful talk. Does anybody have a question? Anybody want to break the ice? Over there, okay. There you go. Hey, uh, thanks very much for your lecture. It was very interesting and insightful. Pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm Frida. I am um, building a very um, uh, small business at a very small website at the moment. Um, just basically a one-man show. Uh, so now I wanted to ask whether you have any specific tips or hints for me to do some testing as I can't build another second website or I can't do some, uh, put, I, I can't really put a team of people on my SEO ranking and uh, I thought that uh, when you started uh, the lecture you, um, it sounded a bit uh, like some techniques that you would use at Delivery Hero maybe, but do you have maybe some tips and hints for someone who's starting relatively small? Mm, well, uh well, I'm, I'm, I, I am trying to avoid uh, uh, answering it depends, but I'm, I'm afraid I, I have to. Because, um, well, the most important thing is uh, if there is, well, usually, uh, well, I don't know if it was uh, understandable from, from, from what I, uh, I put together, but my favorite option, even if it is hard to manage, is the network of test websites. Uh, but of course I understand that it, it takes a lot of time, so it's justifiable only once you have reached a certain, a certain level of also of independence. So when you start in SEO, I mean, you may also find in Google s several people saying that SEO is dead. They have been saying this for roughly 10 years now. So every year from time to time there is a Google algorithm and people freak out. So uh, the main suggestion is to see the competition. 
probably, I mean, if you don't have a competition, then it's perfect. So you feel free to test whatever you want because probably you um, you can easily reach some good uh, some good position. If you do have competitors, check what they are doing. Try to understand. There are also tools that can help you understanding which are the factors that they are why they are ranking number one. In the, at the end of the day, uh, you don't need to be uh, to have to build a perfect website. You need to be uh, better than your competitors. If you understand which is the, 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 the key factor why they are on top of, of Google, for example, uh, then just replicate it, do better. I mean, uh, some people say that if um, if you make something better uh, or fresher, so if you see some content which is a bit outdated on your competitor's website and you can do it better, you can give more information, um, well, you can, so you can, you can definitely, uh, you, you can make it. Uh, apparently, is, it, Google is more, for the moment, is more democratic than it used to be. So if you have some very good content, which is, easy to use, so also think of your audience. What do they really want? We are now going beyond keywords. Keywords are a thing of the past. Now Google thinks of search intents. So think of that, see what your competitors are doing, and do it better. Yeah. Hello. Uh, mm, you briefly mentioned uh, progressive web apps yep. at the end. Um, I've tried to make some progressive web apps website myself and applications mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I just wanted to have you take on your opinion on, on progressive web apps and SEO, because for me and all the opinions I had on that matter, uh, mm -hmm. contrary to AMP, it's not a booster in terms of uh, ranking. Uh, I didn't have like... A, Big surprises. So, did you have any experience uh, yourself, or any news on that? Uh, I actually did. Uh, I mean, this is a good example. I had some good experience with AMP, for example. <laughs> I saw an improvement, probably not for the AMP itself, but because it solved some technical problem I used to have before implementing them. So, this is probably the reason uh, for the progressive web apps. Um, I do not have any any experience, or at least any experience I can share, because we are starting to test something, especially for this, in uh, in some of our websites in at Deliver Hero. So I can't share the results. I can say they look they look good for the moment. So, pro but again, it's hard to say at this stage if it's the progressive web app is itself which is bringing this result, which is uh, bringing about these results, or the technical improvement that we have on other factors. They improve the user experience, they improve the page loading speed, of course, so these are ranking factors. So it's hard to say at this stage what is bringing about what, but I would continue. Anybody else? Hi. Um, okay. How long would you run a test normally for checking the ranking? How long would you wait until you say, okay, and I will check the tests? Okay, now I have to say this for sure. It depends. Uh, of course. Uh, yes, but for example, I usually take six to eight months, but it really depends on, on, on what we are testing. For example, if it is an on-site thing, well, probably uh, it takes less time because we wait until Google crawls again the page and we see what happens in, you know, in the next, in the following two weeks. If uh, I'm testing some backlink sources, since we know that uh, links can be problematic, then it takes at least six to eight, to eight uh, weeks. Uh, other, you know, after that, probably we can say, okay, this thing has not worked, or it did work. Thanks. Cool. Hi. 
Hey. hey. Um, I wanted to ask you um, a question related to link building. Because in the past I was working also in an internship uh, and we used to do a lot of link buildings with sponsor blogs, articles, and also uh, some di directories. Uh, but I want to ask you for a beginner starting our business uh, without investments also to buy sponsor articles. What would you recommend for us like as entrepreneurs and without an investment also to invest on link building strategies? Um, uh, if there is anything I would invest in is link building. Of course we can do it in different ways. So for example, um, I mean, uh, if, you, if you Google a bit, you will probably see people saying that directories are a thing of the past, they do not work anymore. Well, maybe it's true, but it depends on the niche, on the market niche. So probably in your niche, uh, they, they are still working. So please go ahead and test. Um, what is definitely important is that we have the same or a similar link profile backlink profile, so in terms of link building, as our competitors. This is still an important ranking factor. So uh, I, would, I would invest some money in this, uh, or we can try to capitalize some other activity. I mean, if we, uh, have, if we, if we host an event, or if we have some sort of partnership, or, um, what I would avoid is, which is really a thing of the past, um, is the link exchange. I link to you, you link to me. This doesn't work and it doesn't look good. But, but for the rest, if we have some partnership with, with other companies or if we participate to events or uh, also, I mean, I would try to get any opportunity to have a link. Some people say that in some niche, uh, you can also, if you simply ask the right way, for a backlink, you will get it for free. So, good luck. <laughs> um, hi, thanks okay. for the talk very much. Um, actually, touching on the question on link building, um, yeah. how are your thoughts regarding using either abandoned domains or domains you probably use for some other project and then redirect them with a 301 redirect to a new project. I mean, it would, and it actually does generate more backlinks to your new project or new domain, but they definitely are of probably a little less quality. Is there any guidance you can recommend or would you actually not recommend this technique if you can't get any quality backlinks? Um. The, the important thing is, so basically the question is, if we use a, a domain uh, that we buy just for testing and then we see that we receive some good backlinks and then we redirect the domain to the money side, right? Yeah, for example, I mean, there's, there's tools online where you can see what domains are expiring soon and if they yes. are a somehow close fit to what you're testing or doing, you could snatch them up and redirect them to your website to get some more backlinks. Mm, well, as far as I could see, uh, this technique can work only if the website receiving these backlinks already has some, uh, you know, a, a solid link profile because it can, you know, it's like receiving all those backlinks at once. If these are your new, the, the, the first backlinks you receive, it can be pretty, you know, this is a technique spammers use. So we, and Google knows that this is a technique that people use. Of course, they can't prevent uh, people from legitimately redirecting the websites to, a website to another one. But, you know, if you do this, on a directly, so on a, on a new website, or on a website which has two backlinks, and you redirect a domain which has 200, this is probably, you know, it can raise a, a red flag in the eyes of Google. So make it believable, and it will work. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I got another question about sure. redirections. Um, 
Have you ever messed with private blogging networks or any black hat technique, if you're legally able to, to talk about it? Uh, yes, I mean, I have never done anything illegal. Uh, in, in my company, I only do clean stuff, also clean in the meaning of Google. But if I can recommend you something, do some black hat. Try to break it. Try to break Google. Uh, you know, personally, when they say this thing doesn't work, I do that. Of course, on, on a test website. I would say 50% of the times, I mean, 50% uh, of the time it doesn't work at all. So my test website is penalized, but I don't care because, you know, it, 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 that's, that's, that's the reason. But in some other cases, out of 50% of the times, you can see that you have some advantage. So uh, if you understand which is the threshold that you don't have to cross, well, you can also apply it. You know, uh, most people say that they do gray hat SEO. So black hat SEO, everything super, you know, uh, risky. White hat, we follow Google guidelines blindly. Something in between. Uh, I mean, uh, I really recommend do some black hat, try that. Uh, at some point, probably, uh, especially if you go to extreme, so if you go too far, your test website will be penalized, but in that very moment you will know which is the threshold you don't have to cross. So this is a great learning. And then, I mean, always consider that, you know, everything we do in SEO, especially in link building, has to be considered black hat. So Google doesn't like it. For Google, all the links have to be earned. So they have to be spontaneous. And, I mean, we know this is not the case, so. Beautiful. Thank you so much for My all pleasure. the, thank you for the questions. If you have more tasks, you can come up front and ask them after the talks. Sure. Thank you one more time. My pleasure, thank you. <laughs>